FM, the source. All right, 24 minutes before 11 o'clock. Wow, this is an amazing story. This is called, the book is called The Good Mothers, and uh, there is a... Uh, I guess there's more than one mafia in the world. I, I don't know. I, I never understood the whole mafia thing. Uh, Alex Perry is on the phone. Alex uh, wrote the book, The Good Mothers. Alex is an award-winning journalist. He's been with us before. He was held in jail for five days before being convicted of being a determined and resourceful journalist. Yeah. Wow. That's my favorite uh, he's part. a contributor to The Guardian, The New Yorker, The Sunday Times, Newsweek, Time, and the book is again is called The Good Mothers, the true story of the women who took on the world's most powerful mafia. And I don't even know how to pronounce the mafia. It's like one of those N D words. It's like I never know how to pronounce those words. Uh, Alex, good morning. How are you? <laughs> good morning, Larry. Well, how do you pronounce the name of that mafia? Uh, so the the word is it, it's Andrangheta. You put the stress on the second syllable. Oh, my God. And they're here. They're here in America. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you, look at, uh, if you look at the recent kind of FBI bus along the eastern seaboard, actually the big, the big volume cocaine bus, uh, particularly in New York, you'll see the Andrangheta all over it. Wow, wow. And how did you find out about it? And this is a story that st- starts... Well, not starts really completely, but uh, it's because of the murder of one of the wives, right? That's right. I mean, the, 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 so the Good Mothers are three women who were born into the Andrangheta, the Calabrian Mafia, which is based in the toe of Italy. It's, 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 also, it's, it's, it's the Mafia you've never heard of. You know, yeah. You've definitely heard of Cosa Nostra, the Sicilians, the Godfather, all of that. Uh, you've probably heard of the Camorra, which is based in Naples through the work of Roberto Saviano. Uh, not coincidentally, the Indrangheta is the one you've never heard of and is also the big brother. It's by far the most powerful. Uh, runs 70% of the cocaine in Europe, embezzles tens of billions from the European Union, the Italian state, has a global gun running network, uh, a global money laundering network. Uh, even does things like dump nuclear waste at sea. It's, it's a massive criminal organization um, and uh, in 120 countries around the world, yeah, including, including the U.S. And, and, and Canada. Did you put yourself in any danger by writing the book? <laughs> a good question. Uh, uh, a little bit. Um, I kind of received a couple of oblique threats. There was a, a lawyer who leaned across the table at one point and looked me in the eye and and sort of said, we always get what we want, which I, I, I guess was her way of telling me who she actually represented. Um, wow. So I went into a village in Calabria where one of the, of the good mothers, one of the women I write about, was brought up and, and was kind of ambushed there. Um, the sister of this woman uh, uh, turned up with the, actually the assistance of the local policeman, kind of buttonholed me took my picture, took my full name, took the picture and full name of my translator, and, and the following week in both local newspapers there was a 2,000-word article on precisely who I was, where I'd been staying, who I'd been to see, and what I was up to, as in, we know who you are. Oh, wow. You, we know what you're up to. How did that frighten you? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean you know, I did, ask, I did ask the prosecutors and the policemen that I was talking to, you know, whether I needed to worry... Most of them said, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's kind of, I, I guess, reassuring and disturbing equal measure. Most of them said, well, you live near London, so you'll be fine because the Indrangheta wouldn't kill anybody there because they're running so much money through London that they wouldn't draw, want to draw attention to themselves, which I guess is good for me, but bad for the UK. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. One guy actually sort of said to me, um, um, well, if you're making them out to be you know, murdering misogynist thugs, then, you know, if you're in the business of protection, that's actually good for the brand. And uh, they, <laughs> and, uh, they treated their, their um, uh, females, the, the women, the, the girls, as property. I mean, they would um, commit uh, the little, little children as brides to somebody else when they were real small. Exactly. I mean, the, the Indrangheta was founded in the, in the late 19th century, and it's built on very claustrophobic, tight, traditional 
Calabrian family structure. You know, you're born in, you ma- or you marry in, and that's it. And it's a very closed world. And the kind of their social mores, in a way, haven't haven't moved on really since the 19th century. They're absolutely patriarchal, murderously misogynist. Actually, you, if you're a girl. You can't really leave the house unaccompanied. Beating is routine. You're married off at 13 or 14 in these kind of clan alliances, as you say. If you're unfaithful, you're dead. And it'll be your father or your brother or your son that kills you and quite often dissolves your body in acid to erase the family shame. I mean, it's, oh, it's wow. astonishing the yeah, did- level of misogyny in... How did you get access to this information? Sorry, go ahead. How did you find out these things? Um, the Italian justice system turns out to be uh, a, a re- reporter's treasure trove. Every time, I mean, the, the Italians are, because they've had the mafia for so long, they've developed a capacity for surveillance, which is unbelievable. I mean, they, these guys can bug an orchard. I mean, I heard of one time when they actually bugged a road. They ripped up the, the, the asphalt and relayed it with bugs in it because they knew there was a boss that liked walking and talking along that road. So, and then when they present a case, all this stuff enters the public record and, and you just basically, wow. my method was to take prosecutors out to lunch and, and they would have over <laughs> 2,000 oh, wow. pages of documents. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's just amazing to me that the billions of dollars that have uh, emerged throughout this whole family over decades is, is, is just totally amazing because these countries, their, their monetary system is going bankrupt, yet these guys find the money everywhere. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, that, you know, that's the great tragedy and, and the real reason, actually, to, 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 to stand up to the mafia is that they present themselves very often as kind of righteous resistance fighters, representatives of the poor and the oppressed uh-huh. against yeah. the state that they see as sort of predatory. The truth is they are the ones depressing and predating on those economies and crushing any kind of... Uh, enterprise and, and keeping people in poverty, while, as you say, corralling billions for themselves. So establish, you've already established how uh, ruthless they can be. The, the subtitle is The True Story of the Women Who Took On the World's Most Powerful Mafia. How did they take them on? What did they do? Well, they, there, were, there were three women who rebelled uh, for, for remarkably similar reasons. Essentially, their main motivation was they wanted a different life for their children. They could see that life stretching ahead of them. Their sons would become killers and mafiosi. Their daughters would be, you know, virtual slaves married to a gangster, probably in jail, and they're confined to the house. And they, their only sort of way out and alternative, of, a chance of a different life was to was to testify, go to the state, testify, uh-huh. and ask for witness protection. And there was one particular prosecutor. Alessandra Ceretti, unsurprisingly a woman, who understood that the women inside the Mafia were not just victims and, and, and helpless, but actually were mines of information. They knew everything uh, and, act, and had real motivation to speak out and to, to cross to the wow. side of the state. Fascinating and, and a little bit troubling to think about the fact that we have these in the world, uh, but I, I suppose that's just the way it is. Alex Perry is our guest. The book is called The Good Mothers. I have a copy of the book that was sent to me, so call me if you'd like the copy that we have. Uh, we'll leave it on the, the uh, desk here for you. The rest of us have to go buy it. I did find it on Amazon. Do you have a website dedicated to the book? Uh, yeah, well, you can find it on my own website, um, alex dash uh, Perry.com, but it's in all the bookstores and all the usual online retailers as well. Very good. Um, it looks like you're doing really well on Amazon, too. Um, well, thank you for being on the show, Alex. That was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're Very welcome. kind of you. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Tish. I've been with the station a long time, and the best part of my job is the nice people I work with. My decades of experience gives me the background to help businesses reach their goals. Whether your business is large or small, before you make your next marketing decision, give me a call. The number is 352-732-8000. Or email me at Tisha, T-I-S-H-I-A, at WOCA.com. Working together, we can come up with a marketing plan that works. Palm Garden announces Fast Track. Fast Track. 
focused assessment, safe transition. When a new guest is admitted to Palm Garden, we start with the ABCs. A is the assessment to determine what the guest needs. B is for basic care, which is excellent nursing and therapy. And C is for consistency to provide what's needed throughout the stay. Fast Track, Palm Garden will get you home fast, really, really fast. Take a fast tour of Palm Garden located at the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 34th Street. Attention WOCA listeners. Do you or someone you know have an outgoing personality with great organizational skills? 